boys and girls, are you sitting comfortably? Because today's video is story time. Back at the beginning of the year, I did a video entitled Story Time, which if you haven't seen, you probably don't know. I told the story of Pandora's box in that video and gave a little bit of literary and philosophical background to the actual myth. Um, a lot of people commented on that video saying, do this again, that'd be great. And I was like, sure, I will. Well, I keep my promises, whether they be six months late or not. Today I come to you with the myth of the Minotaur and its birth. Let's get started. In Greek mythology, the ruler of Minoan Creek was King Minos and his wife, Pasiphae. Thanks to a curse placed on Pasiphae by Poseidon, she fell in lust with a white bull who may or may not have been Poseidon himself. Side note, women sleeping with animals slash gods against their will is an unnervingly common motif in Greek mythology. Eager to consummate her love with the bull, Pasiphae goes to Daedalus, the kingdom's resident inventor. Is that Daedalus the one with the son Icarus who he made the wings for and he flew into the sun? Yeah? You would be right. So at the Queen's request, Daedalus created a bull costume for the Queen to wear, um, as you do, so she could make love to the bull or the bull could make love to her. Lovely. Now unfortunately in this uh, fit of lust, uh, contraception was forgotten and the queen fell pregnant. Obviously it was not a standard child that she bore, it was the Minotaur. So when she gave birth, the baby, half bull, half man. Minos was a little bit shocked. Now I'm not sh exactly sure what he was gonna do with this terrifying beast. King Minos had a labyrinth built in which he placed the Minotaur and every now and then he would sacrifice a woman to the Minotaur to keep him happy. You know, you don't you don't want to neglect your stepsons. That that is basically how the Minotaur was born. Now, a little bit of historical background to this myth. The Minoan Empire on Crete existed during the second millennium BC, but before the height of the Greek civilization on the mainland that we know so well. Archaeologists have excavated various palaces on Crete, including the one at Knossos, which you might have heard of. The term palace was coined by Sir Arthur Evans in the early 20th century, but it's not necessarily an accurate way to describe these buildings. They were more likely administrative centres. Now, these sites are made up of various clusters of building, all set out in a maze-like pattern, somewhat like a labyrinth. Surprisingly, these settlements don't seem to be fortified in the traditional manner, you know, walls surrounding the buildings, but we should not underestimate the difficulties in penetrating a maze-like settlement. All of the passages in are quite small and broken up at different points around the site, and then once you're inside, it's a, it's a maze of corridors and paths leading between multiple leveled buildings. Another notable feature of the Minoan civilization is their fascination with the bull. Various frescoes and vases and statues have been found to depict bulls and bull leaping, which seems to have been quite a popular sport back in um, ancient Crete. So it's really no surprise that when the ancient Greeks came from the mainland to visit Crete after the fall of the Minoans, that they saw these depictions of bulls and bull leaping and the importance of horns and other bull related miscellany in their religion all set amongst these labyrinth type architectural structures that they quite happily form the myth of King Minos's wife and her Minotaur baby. Or it may have just happened. Really who knows. Anyway I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode of story time. Maybe next time you won't have to wait half a year before I do one of these again. Let me know if you enjoy them anyway and I will keep them up because I quite enjoy filming these. Until next time guys, bye!